Well, most criminal law texts look at a series of offences like murder, manslaughter and rape. And my text doesn't. It is concerned with all offences and it looks at every possible offence and tries to come up with a method for looking at any of them. It has lots of examples, but they're not traditional examples. They might be of drugs or pollution or the like, uh, or of murder or of rape, but there's no particular offence the text looks at. The point is to be able to look at all of them. The text uses the same idea as other courses, which is that ultimately you want to learn transferable skills in criminal law. It just starts from a different spot. Instead of learning about murder and then transferring skills from that, it learns about statutes and transfers those skills. Uh, a key part of the course at the law school is that the students are examined by being given an offence they've never seen before. So unlike a traditional course, students don't just study murder and get tested on murder, they study a whole range of offences and then know that none of those offences will be on the exam. A traditional course could do the same thing, although my view is that you get the most out of the course, even if you taught it in the traditional way, if you set the kind of assessment where you give students an offence they haven't seen before. There's a core method of approaching each offence, of looking at elements and discretion and statutory interpretation. And that's in the first half of the book. And the second half of the book is the complexities and variations. Words can be standards. You might have to look at others, uh, association with a crime or incomplete crimes. And those are all variations on that first theme. So the idea was to split it in that way to have the first half in a digestible form. One advantage I've found in the last few years is that you can teach the course in two ways. You can teach a course based on the entire book, or you can teach a course that focuses on the first half of the book and just dips in and out of the second half while discussing other offences. There are three chapters in the book which are pretty unusual for a criminal law course. One is on standards and looks at the difference between proving facts and proving standards like reasonableness or dishonesty. And the other two look at players in the system, victims and mistakes. I think all courses cover those sorts of issues, but I found it was really useful to look at those things in their own chapter. I didn't plan to do it that way when I wrote the book, but it just seemed a natural way of dealing with the topic of criminal law in the way I was approaching it as a statutory interpretation approach. It was just one of those fortuitous things, but I think those chapters now work really well in exploring bits of the criminal law that otherwise get missed. Well, I think criminal law is all about structure. It's got its own way of doing things and you need to be able to bring that out when you teach. Uh, people who teach particular offences have already made structure in the way those offences are framed, but because I don't teach particular offences, it was important to have a consistent structure for each topic so that students knew how to find their way through a textbook. And the structure here was to first of all identify the problem and then to explore the general approach to that problem that the criminal law takes, but then to look at variations at the end. Separating it out in that way means that you aren't trying to do everything at once. Uh, that doesn't mean there isn't flexibility within each chapter, but I found that that particular structure worked well for almost all of them. There are a couple of chapters where I varied it up a little because it worked better with that. Well, the textbook has, of course, been updated for developments in the law in the last few years, but there are two particular changes I made having talked with the first edition now for quite a few years. One is I've separated out some of the, the current problems or tricky technical problems of criminal law into separate boxes, which students can read separately from the rest of the text, and it doesn't get in the way of the rest of the discussion. Uh, and the second is to include at the end of each chapter, or each of the 12 chapters, a worked example, and that's based on my experience of setting exams and marking them at the law school. Uh, and this gives students the ability to see how the discussion in the book would apply to particular offences. One thing I did with those examples is I didn't do, just do 12 separate examples. They're linked because uh, different offences raise different issues in different parts of the course, and students can see how different bits of the textbook affect 